Hey guys, welcome back. It's me again. And I have another video. Um, this one is in reference to a dream. And it's a spiritual dream. It's a um, dream given from God. Um, before I even speak on this dream, I need y'all to pray. Um, don't be scared. Just listen. Um, first of all, y'all know that if y'all... Well, I don't know what y'all watch on YouTube. But I know for me, it's mostly hair and spiritual things. Like... That, that's me being honest. I don't really look at other things. And a lot of spiritual things have come up about people having rapture dreams in the past year. Like heavy. Heavy people people all over the world. People having similar dreams. People having similar characteristics of things. And y'all, let me tell y'all, God cares about those he warns. If he warns you, take heed. And I even was looking at some of these dreams like, wow, like God, you, you are coming. And you're coming faster than we think. Like, the last days have been upon us. We, I don't know where have you been, but we've been in the last days since the 1800s, in my opinion. Probably a little more than that. We've been in the last days. Um, and please understand, because a lot of people say, when would it come? Like, we've been saying this for a long time. Listen to me. Our time is not God's time. God's time is not our times. To him, a day is a thousand days or a thousand years. Or an hour. Like, his time is not our time. And he knows what he's doing. And it's not for us to debate it. It's for us to obey and get in line. But, um, I would say that, um, the pastor that I'm under, besides my husband, um, he had a rapture dream like a month ago, I believe. And I was like, it's, it's getting close to home. Like, because you hear, you see it on YouTube and social media, people having these dreams. But... It's like, wow, somebody that you can see and talk to has had this dream. That's when it becomes real. And not saying I haven't been taking it serious because y'all know me. I love my God and I preach till I'm blue in the face. But what brought it home to me is I had a dream myself. And I had it a couple nights ago. And I told my husband. I haven't told anybody else. But um, I had a dream that it was the same thing that's going on now. Like, um... People were dying from the virus. The world was still in utter chaos. We were still supposed to be shut in our homes. And I was out driving somewhere. I don't know where. And um, I felt myself. Mind you, I'm driving. And I'm only in the car with me, my daughter, and my son. And I felt myself leaving. And the fear of something happening to my children held me down. So literally, like, my, my spirit was trying to go up, but I'm just like, no, I'm the only one in this car. There's no other adults. What about Jacob? What about the boys? I don't know what's going on. And when I say boys, I mean his boys, but obviously we weren't in the same place in the dream. But I'm like, I have to, like, in my mind, like, I have to see them go first. Like, I had to. Like, my, even now, like, sometimes, well, before I had the dream, whatever, and I've been praying, like, it's scary, y'all, because we know our children don't know what's going on. It's hard to explain. We just, we're scared and we're fearful that if not us, then them. That's kind of our mentality. Like, if something's bad going to happen, let it happen to us and not the kids. And that's how I was feeling in the dream. Like, I don't want my children to go to hell. They don't understand. They don't, un they, I don't know if they've been praying. I don't know what they believe. I don't know if they truly believe or they're just faking for me. I don't know. And in the dream... Like I said, I can feel myself lifting and I'm looking down like, no, the car's going to crash. They're going to die. And I even looked to them and I said, why aren't y'all lifted? Why? What is going on? Why are y'all still here? Y'all are children. What have you done? That was, and mind you, my son, my son is only 16 months, y'all. So I'm just freaking out like, what could you have done? What is wrong? Why are you not part of the plan? Like, I'm literally mad, and I'm frustrated, and I'm hurt, and I'm just like, what is going on? And why can't I see my husband leave? I want to make sure he's okay. I don't want him to be down here. I don't want to leave, and they go through this by themselves. And I look to my daughter, and she's like, I don't know. And I'm looking at my son, and he, he's only 16 months, so he just... And she paused, and she took a deep breath, and... I believe she asked my son, she turned to him and she said, forgive me. I don't know what for. I don't, I don't know. But when she said that and they made eye contact, they both went. And then I ended up being stuck. 
because I'm worrying about something that one, I don't know what's going on because I don't know all the heads and tails. And two, it won't my place. God, was, he knew what he was doing. And here I am trying to, you know, meddle in his plan and, and what he's doing. And when I woke up, I'm like, wow, God, what in the world? And let me tell y'all, I woke up saying, what am I doing? A am I doing stuff for the kingdom or am I doing stuff for myself? Am I idolizing my children? What am I doing? And I can honestly say, like any other mother probably, I it was, it was, you know, my kids are it. Like, don't mess with them. Don't bully them. Don't, 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 don't. That was my attitude. And I do truly believe that God said, wait a minute. Get right and get out of my way. I really felt like that's what he was saying to me. Like, just get right and get out of my way. Like, you've done your job. Or if you feel like you haven't, then you continue to do your job. But you get out of my way. Let me do this. And more in particular, I'm going to be very transparent with y'all. Y'all know that I am a blended family. I am, I had my daughter first. My husband had two kids, two boys. We came together and then we had my son. And it was a lot of, you know, these are my kids, these are your kids. Like, oh, there was a lot of back and forth, y'all. And a part of me had to really just die down and say, you know what? He is king of this castle. He is the head of this house. And God has given him to me. I need to get out the way. But, you know, as a mother, you want to be protective and say, you know what? Uh-uh, these are mine. I had her. What are you talking about? But guess what? God makes no mistakes. And he made the order evident. God, man, wife, kids. If you're not living in that order, if you're not thinking in that order, you better get yourself right and you better okay. Nobody saying neglect your children. Nobody saying toss, toss them to the side because that's what a lot of people portray that thought. That's not what nobody's saying. But And this obviously is for married people or people who even think about getting a relationship. Um, put God first. Let that man, if you're going to marry that man, then that man needs to leave. If you don't think he can leave and take care of your children the way you would, then you better leave him alone and talk to somebody else. It's that simple. It's not rocket science. And that's why I had to sit there and talk to God and say, you know what? I can trust my husband. And guess what? If I can trust him with myself, I can trust him giving me the word and preaching to me and teaching to me the Bible, then I certainly can trust him with my children. And so I, there obviously got to be some changes that I need to take care of. I hope this is a blessing to somebody else. Listen, y'all, pay attention to your dreams and your visions. Read the word. Pay attention to the scriptures that stick out to you. Read it fast and pray. Um, pay attention to the people around you who's hurting, who's lacking, who needs a word. Pay attention. Wake up. Pay attention. I love y'all dearly. And I say, you know what? This could bless somebody. And I hope it does. Um, get your house in order. That's what God keeps telling me. Get my house in order. Even something as simple as additional cleaning. We know this virus is person to person contact. Clean your house. Extra clean your house. Get rid of things that you don't need. Stock up on some things. I don't mean go crazy because that's another thing that was going on. Um, people were saying, um, no need to hoard and this, that, and the third. Now, true, I don't believe you going getting a shopping cart with a thousand packs of washing powders and detergent i don't believe in that i believe god didn't tell you to do that do i say hey if you normally get one maybe get an extra one i believe in doing that um more so with i know in our house anyway this is what we did anyway in case this was more based on a financial thing like the times get tight in that shit then we can say okay we already got it um sometimes we'll stock up like we get two toothpaste and then when the extra one goes out then we get another one or we get two things of peroxide just to have that backup one when we're in transition and going buying something. But whatever the Lord directs to you. I know with me, um, at one point, I left out of the house because people put a bunch of lies on Facebook. And I didn't even take time to look into stuff. And all I know was people said stores were shutting down. We weren't able to leave our house. And the virus was everywhere. And I knew that it was our actual week to restock. And we didn't have nothing. You might as well say no food, no meat, no toilet tissue. We didn't have nothing. Let alone the basics because um, we believe in taking baths and washing hands. So hand sanitizer, we have it in our cars, but it wasn't a big thing. Um, Lysol, we did have a can, thank God, because um, we have two of us in here to get strep throat. So we just had got the um, 
can. Otherwise, we need have that. I'm a bit bleach person myself, so I just do a lot of bleach spraying. Um, but man, when I tell you, when we went in those stores and we hardly nothing left, and we had to fend for stuff, but let me tell you, God is awesome because almost every single thing that I need, I found. And it, what I did found, it was brought to me. Um, we've been receiving blessings through food. Y'all, God is awesome and he will not leave you hungry or thirsty. He will not leave you bare and homeless. Trust him and believe in him and he will provide for you. But you have to have that faith, man. You can't be sitting around here and denouncing God every time you're mad, every time you're lacking, every time you're upset. Trust God, have faith, move forward. This is not the end. But I'm telling you, it ain't too far from it. Repent. Repent of all your sins. Things that you may be holding on. The anger, the guilt, the shame, the um, unforgiveness. Look, let it go. Let go and let God. I'm standing before you right now and saying, look, I just came to turn and say, you know what? I've been lied to about who was my father. But I'm, I forgive. I've been molested by a family member, but I forgive. Um, I've been abused, neglect, hurt, shamed, bullied, but I forgive. For whatever it takes, because mind you, these things, that holding things in the heart, the being angry, the lying, and all that stuff, that's what will keep you from heaven. And you don't want that. You want to be able to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. Um, get rid of this anger, this hurt, and this shame. Get rid of all of it, Lord. Help me to accept me for who I am. Help me to accept your will and your way. And help me to use common sense. And help me to be considerate. If you don't have to travel, don't travel. If you don't have to leave your house, don't leave the house. Um, especially your children. Like, the few times I did have to leave out, I'm like, okay, y'all stay in the car. Because, yes, I can fend for myself. And I can go out and say, you know what, let me bob and weeds out here. But, if you don't have to go in the store, you don't have to. Um... Be prayerful. Don't just be fearful because that's the thing. Like people are scared, they don't know. But y'all, another thing too that um Lord, thank you, Holy Ghost. Um, y'all know there's talk about going to micro dollars or the virtual wallet, the electronic wallet, where there's no more exchange of money because they feel like that's the big deal, big thing of the problem. Because the coronavirus can last on the surface for nine days, and they feel like most of these transitions is probably through money. Listen, the Bible speaks about the mark of the beast. And the crazy thing is, because you got a lot of people who don't understand, who don't read a Bible, and even people who read a Bible, they're they're literally thinking that the mark of the beast is literally gonna be six, six, six. You've seen it in movies. No. The number six, six, six is just mankind. That's the number six. That's what it means. What they're talking about doing is two things. One, putting a chip inside of you to determine your status of health, meaning corona free, non corona free, whatever the case, so that they can know and they can deal with you accordingly. Second, they want to do a paperless, coinless wallet. Because the issue um, with the paper dollars and stuff, they saying everybody ain't got a house, everybody ain't got a mailing address, but we want to make sure that everybody gets this money. Listen, let's let's just use common sense here. If the world shut down, people, this is still going on, what in the world can that money do for you? How, how can you use it? Where will you use it? If the world's at a standstill, where is it going to go? Now, I'm not saying it's worthless. I'm not saying $1,000 isn't no money. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying if the world ceased, what would it do for you? That's my question. So, they're talking about making this virtuous wallet electronically. Once again, something embedded in you where you can buy and trade electronically with chips inside of you. So, they can keep counting your money, your spending habits, and your health status. What does that sound like to you? Does it not sound like the world, the word is fulfilling, fulfilling itself. It says the mark of the beast where you will not be able to buy, trade, or sell without it. People wake up. Like, this is not our grandmas and our great grandma that was talking the Bible and talking about God coming back. We're in the last days. Don't question it. Don't doubt it. We are in the last days. Jesus is soon to return. Don't question it. Don't doubt it. Just be ready. 
Do all you can when you can to win souls, to do what's right in your own house, and do according to his will. It's not meant to scare y'all. I just want to inform someone because somebody might be confused, don't know what to believe, this, that, and the third. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, keep comments respectful. If you have questions, by all means, ask. But if you disrespecting me or my God or my household, you will get deleted. That simple. Not playing no more. I mean, I had a couple videos where I put a little, some controversy things up and people had some nasty things to say. I'm not doing that no more. I even wanted to kind of turn the comments off, but just in case somebody want to need prayer or they need somebody to fast with them or whatever the case, I'm here for you. Um, I'll leave my email down below too if you want to make contact with me. But um, please pray. Uh, many of you may know or may not know my husband is in the medical field. Um, we are in North Carolina. There are cases all around us. But God has kept him and has kept us, and God is good. Continue to pray, pray, pray. Read your Bible. God bless you. Take care. Bye.